last shop on road. That'll be the old Moto Legends place. Always know they'll have a pot of tea on for me and one of Sean's mum's delicious shortbread biscuits. Hi there, Chris, Chuck in the Cap, Moto Legends. Now we're recording this on Sunday, June the 14th. Tomorrow, Monday the 15th, we're going to be opening the shop again. Now nobody can deny that the last 12 weeks have represented a rather a strange time. They've been tough on a lot of people, no more so, I suppose, than upon those who have actually contracted the virus and, of course, upon the families of those people. In general, I'm not, as an individual, prone to grand gestures, but I have to say I do feel particularly for the owners of small businesses, small businesses like ours, people who've often spent their entire working lives building those businesses up. To see coronavirus take their businesses away, that's going to be a particularly tough pill for those people to swallow. But I have to say that in that context, we are more fortunate than some. We are still here, although I'm predicting that there are much harder times to come. We are about to enter a period where they're saying that Unemployment is going to be up to 3 million. That's the highest level it's been certainly during my lifetime. I think it's going to be a particularly hard winter for not just small businesses, for all businesses, but I think it's going to be really tough. Nevertheless, there seems to be some excitement that non-essential shops, shops like ours, are going to be opening up again. But as per the video that I recorded a few weeks ago, what I called a lockdown video, I don't think shopping in the future is going to be like shopping has been in the past. It's going to be different. Now, I read a post on another retailer's Facebook page recently. It was one of those retailers that had opened a few weeks early. And they had a customer on there complaining that with all the restrictions that that retailer had put in place, they'd taken all the fun out of shopping. And I thought that was a bit harsh, a bit cruel, because no retailer wants to do that. Any retailer, every retailer wants to make it as much fun and as enjoyable as possible as it can for its customers. It's the coronavirus that's going to make shopping less fun in the future. And I have to say that that's a particular concern for Sarah and me because having fun is a huge part of what, what we do this for, why we do it. We love motorcycles, we love motorcycling, and we love the company of motorcyclists. At weekends, it's like a party in here. We're surrounded by bikers, guys who've become regulars, guys we've done trips with, guys we've got to know, people who have become friends. But it's not going to be like that in the future. And I'm now going to go on and I'm going to talk about what I think it is going to be like. So as I've mentioned already, the shop is opening again tomorrow, Monday, June the 15th. But I have to tell you, I'm concerned. I'm very concerned because I've got no idea what to expect. When we open the doors at 10 o'clock, is there going to be a big queue of bikers down the outside of the building? Or is absolutely nobody going to turn up? All I know is that we are having lots of messages from people saying that they can't wait for us to open our doors. They're leaving comments on YouTube, they're sending us emails, they may have seen something on one of our YouTube reviews, but a lot of people want to come in and look at stuff. But one of our issues is that we can only fit three or four people into the shop. It's a small shop and we do things a wee bit differently. Now in the past, when somebody would come to see us, they could be with us for two, three, even four hours as they tried on different suits, we changed cheek pads, we moved the armour into the right place. I don't think it's going to be quite like that in the future, but the implication of the way we handle customers and the amount of time it takes us to serve a customer is that you could be waiting outside for one hour, two hours, even more. And in my experience, bikers just won't do that. I know certainly if I turned up at a bike shop and someone said, you're not going to be in there, mate, for another hour or so, I would just get on a ride, you know, I would leave. What we're going to have to do is wait and see what it's like in the first week, because obviously we can adapt. One of the things that we're looking at doing is getting a big marquee out, out here, a 10 metre marquee, splitting it up into two metre segments, and then basically you come along, you tell us what you want, we bring it out and you can try it out, out here. That will give us the ability to serve more people. But what I can tell you is that in the future, not only at Moto Legends, but in motorcycle shops, service is going to be less like silver service at an a la carte restaurant and more like a Chinese takeaway. It is going to be harder, for example, for a number of reasons, for you to come in and say, I want to try on six helmets, four jeans and three different pairs of boots. It's unfair on those who are waiting outside, but it's unfair on retailers as well, because everything you try on then has to 
go into isolation and be out of circulation for between 24 and 72 hours. Now, most retailers only carry one of everything in each size. So if you've tried on half a dozen items, that means those items are not available to anyone who comes in that day or the next day or conceivably the next day. And that's just a little bit unfair. We're also not sure what it's going to be like with regard to changing rooms because we don't have the manpower every time somebody comes out of a changing room to do a thorough hygienic clean. We'll do our best, but what I can tell you, the point I want to make is don't come and see us expecting life to be like it was before the lockdown, before coronavirus. So in this brave new world that lays ahead of us, clearly as a retailer, we're going to be adapting and changing doing things differently but i have a feeling that our customers have also got to adopt to an extent a different mindset in this phase as we come out of lockdown this isn't the time to visit a motorcycle shop purely because you're seeking some advice this isn't the right time to come and just do some browsing now clearly i'm not saying that when you visit us or when you visit a motorcycle shop you've got to buy there was a retailer who put that on their website recently caused a lot of upset i don't think the retailer really meant that what they were trying to say was what i'm trying to say is which is don't come if you just want to seek some advice. But what you do need to do is some homework. Before you go in, know more or less what you want. I understand, of course I do, the need to touch and feel something, to see whether you like the colours and so on, but this is not the time to visit a motorcycle shop in order to further your research. Now, I suppose what I'm saying is if you have absolutely no intention of buying, if you're in that thinking phase, that research phase, don't visit a motorcycle shop. And our views are not driven by the fact that we're concerned about wasting time and you're, and you're not spending money. That's not what it's about as far as I'm concerned. It's about fairness to the others, the other motorcyclists who are waiting outside who need gear. So that's really our motivation. We want to serve as many people as we can so that we don't keep too many people waiting outside. We don't want to upset those people. Now, when the shop is open, we're probably not going to be serving tea and coffee. There's going to be none of Sean's mum's delicious biscuits. We're not going to be set up for long chats. And for many people, I still believe that mail order or ordering on the, over the internet is still the way to go. We've still got our two for one order system going on. So you pay for one, we send you two, you send one back. So for many people and still for the coming period, I think that way the remote buying is still going to be a better way of progressing. If you aren't going to visit us, I think there's one idea might be to phone ahead. We'll always put something aside. What you should then do is come to the back door because there may be a queue outside the front door. Come to the back door, we'll bring it out, you can try it on. Now, in the, in the good weather, that's fine. We've got tables and chairs. Obviously, when it's raining, that's going to be a little bit less pleasant. It's going to be a little bit less feasible, but that's maybe what's going to be resolved when we get our marquee. My real fear, I have to tell you, my real nightmare is people traveling several hours to come and see us. Let's say you turn up here at two or three o'clock. If there's a queue outside the door, you might not get into the shop at all. That's gonna be deeply frustrating. That's gonna be very disappointing. But I'd ask you to understand that's not us. Our philosophy, our approach to service hasn't changed. We're still about service. We're, we're still about personal fitting. But with the two meter rule and all the restrictions that surround us at present, we just cannot do it the way we used to do it. So in the past, I would imagine that about 30% of people who came into the shop would be people who actually bought from us. And that was fine. But I think moving forward, we are going to expect, and I think you must expect, shops to expect, that a higher percentage of that are gonna come in to buy rather than just to look and browse. It's actually only fair on everybody. So the question might be, once we open our doors again, what have we done to make this place as safe as it can possibly be? Well, when you come in the shop, we'll have balaclavas available, which you can wear if you're trying on a helmet. We'll have masks, gloves, sanitizers. We've even put in a brand new toilet. When you come to pay at the counter, there'll be a screen so you don't have to get too close to the person who you're paying. For helmets, we've got some solution. It's a, an isopropyl 70% alcohol for cleaning helmets. We're told that's the best way of cleaning helmets to get rid of any viruses there. We've invested in a steam cleaner so that when you've tried something on, it goes out back and we can clean that garment. Hopefully that will enable us to get it through the quarantine process a little bit quicker. Now, a lot of shops are doing contactless payment. That's a little bit difficult here with the sums involved, but you can pay by Apple Pay. So that's a preferred means of payment. Have we done enough in the shop? I don't know. 
We don't have, for example, tape on the floor. It's a small shop and we don't have aisles per se, so we would have to have tape going this way, tape going that way. We just didn't think it would work. So we're gonna ask customers to apply a certain amount of common sense. Outside, we're not gonna have a queuing system, again, with two meter, two meter tape all along. This is not a supermarket. We are not gonna herd bikers. I think I would be insulted if I was a biker and someone was trying to do that. We're going to let people make their own choices. They are, all of our customers are grown ups. If you turn up and you do not like what you see in our car park, then please turn around and leave. It won't create any hard feeling, but you're just gonna to have to take a view on that. The responsibility ultimately is yours. And we're not gonna treat our customers like children. We're not gonna tell them how to behave. The other thing I've got to say is that the advice that comes to us from government is not still definitive. We don't really know what the risks are in terms of a shop like this and clothing and touching clothing and so on. Gloves, I've read on the internet, some people say that they are a help, other people say that they do nothing. Masks, let's face it, the World Health Organization changed its viewpoint and the government had always said masks were doing nothing. Now they're saying that they're mandatory on public transport. So presumably they do do something. But the bottom line is that we cannot totally remove the danger from a shop like this. There are lots of hazards, there are hard surfaces, there's clothing. We would love to see you here, but this is not a hospital. We cannot implement hospital standards of cleanliness and hygiene. So if you are concerned about the levels of hygiene, then really don't come into the shop. I would say also if you are exhibiting, if you are exhibiting any of the associated symptoms, the symptoms that are associated with COVID, please stay at home. If you're over 70, stay at home. If you're in a vulnerable group or if you're shielding, stay at home. If you've got elderly relatives at home, stay at home. In fact, if you are concerned in any way, the advice has got to be stay at home. We would love to see you here, but safety is everyone's main issue. And if you are concerned about anything, then I have to say this is motorcycle clothing. None of it is an absolute necessity if you are worried do not come and see us. So as I've mentioned, the shop is opening again tomorrow, Monday the 15th, and we're excited. At least I think we're excited. But the fact is that we have no idea what it's gonna be like. We're just gonna to have to suck it and see in this first week. I predict that weekdays are gonna be different to weekend days. I think the weather will play a part. If it's really nice, then it's gonna be easy for us to bring stuff outside and you can try it on feel it and touch it and so on outside. It's gonna be different, it's gonna be less comfortable if it rains, but we are ready to adapt. We will move to an appointments only system, maybe appointments in the morning if we need to. We'll bring that marquee in if we think that that is the way forward. But we desperately don't want to upset customers and potential customers. We don't wanna upset anybody, but our fear is that we just cannot match people's expectations. People think that as the shops are open, it's back to the way it was. And I do not believe it's gonna be like that. I want you to know though that our philosophy as a company has not changed. We liked doing the business the way we used to do the business, but it won't be like that for a while and I don't think it's going to be like that for quite a time to come. So all I can say is we look forward to seeing our customers again, but it's not going to be anymore the place that you stop at when you're on a ride out and you just want to go somewhere for a cup of tea and one of Sean's mum's biscuits. So the shop is open, but I'm afraid Jim, not in the way we knew it. <laughs>